Friday the 13th Part 3. In my opinion, the best of the series. This is the film that got me into the series. This is the film that got me collecting horror films to begin with. I remember I went to Suncoast Video, bought it, took it home, loved it. Watched it over and over. So then I went back to Suncoast Video and bought 1 and 2. Went back, bought 4 and 5. Went back, bought 6 and 7. Went back and bought 8. I had all the Paramount Friday the 13th films. I was so happy. After that, I collected the Nightmare on Elm Street series, then the Halloween series, and on and on and on. Um, that's why this film means so much to me. Hey, you son of a bitch! You ain't come back here, you bastard! You ain't getting away with this! Um, and it's also the film where Jason gets his iconic hockey mask. And there's just, yeah, that's why this, it just means so much. This, this movie, um, I love the characters. I love the kills. I love the story. I love the comedy. Just everything about it. It's like the perfect Friday the 13th film, in my opinion. But... It was directed by Steve Miner, and you may know him from doing, of course, Friday the 13th Part 2, which was also great. He also did Halloween H2O, one of my favorites. He did House. He also did Lake Placid. I mean, he's a pretty solid director. He also did a lot of TV shows and stuff like that. Uh, but this had a budget of $2.3 million. They made like $36, $37 million, uh, at the box office U.S. Um, but awesome film, man. Just like I said, there's just so much um, about this movie that it just, it just means a lot to me. So, takes place after part two where you have... Uh, the final girl or main girl Chris uh, played by Dana Kimmel and she's with her friends and they're on vacation going to a house or cabin on Crystal Lake and you have Jason who is walking around with no mask or anything over his face he's just walking around he's supposed to be wounded um, and he's there along with them and he starts to terrorize the group and you can pretty much guess what happens then. Uh, you have uh, Paul Kratka who plays Rick or I like to call him I pop, you know, Eyeball or I Pop and Rick. Uh, he has one of the coolest death scenes where Jason crushes his face and an eyeball pops out. Of course the 3D stuff. But uh, you have Tracy Savage as Debbie. Uh, you have Jeffrey Rogers as Andy, who does handstands all the time. He's always walking on his hands. Uh, Catherine Parks as Vera. And Larry Zerner, who is one of my favorites out of the whole Friday the 13th series. Larry Zerner, who plays Shelly. Shelly is one of my favorite characters. Um... The fact that he can juggle and make jokes and he does pranks and stuff like that. Um, I just, I don't know. There's just, he's got that humor to him, but at the same time, it's, it's like subtle humor. It's not slapstick or over the top or anything like that. It's just you feel sorry for the guy because he's kind of like lonely and he's trying to impress this girl. But at the same time, you know, he's really, um, there's more to him than, than what's seen. I did it! I did it! I did it! Did I do it? Yes, you did it! You were great! I was great! <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know. I just love his character. But you got Richard Brooker, who plays Jason in this. Uh, fantastic. He, he's really, really good in this. Um, and this Jason's awesome, too, you know, because he's more, he's kind of aggressive, but he runs. Jason in this movie runs. Um, really, really cool. Uh... But yeah, so they they go to this this house and Jason's there, and Chris is already dealing with trauma because years ago she had an attack from this person in the woods, and it's supposed to be Jason, um, but it leaves her mentally scarred. You know, she doesn't want to have a relationship with Rick, even though she does have a relationship with him, but like sexually, she just can't 
you know, get close to him, and Rick's trying to get close with her and stuff, and they joke back and forth, but you can tell it's really bothering her. Like, when she's in the house alone and the door is open or something, she, like, looks, and she's just, like, huh, like this, and she looks out at the barn, and, like, you know, she, there's a really cool flashback scene um, in a really cool dream sequence with Jason where he's up in the window, and he's, like, like, uh, like this, and he, like, comes running out after Chris. <laughs> But that wasn't the original story to this movie. The original story was with Amy Steele, who plays Ginny. The original story was Amy Steele, like after, after this movie, after the second movie, um, Ginny begins to learn self-defense. And she returns to college um, after surviving the 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 massacre that happens in this movie um she finds paul's corpse uh inside her dormitory and prepares to track down jason for a what they call a final confrontation so there was going to be like this huge standoff uh between her and jason but the concept was abandoned because of the fact that amy Steele actually declined the role to do this movie um, I would have loved to see, you know, I would have loved to see how that would have turned out with Amy Steele going toe to toe with Jason again. Um, and then we know what happened to Paul's corpse. What happened to Paul? He's got an off screen death. What happened to him? And at least with that concept, we'd actually get to see what happened to Paul or get to see, see that. Um, but yeah, the concept was it was it was scrapped because you know she declined the role. But I'm I'm happy that we got this film. I just was curious to see what would have happened if it went that way. But uh, yeah, this film was actually intended to be the end of the series. Uh, you know, it was supposed to be a trilogy. This was intended to just be a trilogy and just end the series. And they always say that Friday Thirteenth Part Four, the final, uh, the you know the the that that one the final chapter was supposed to end the series as well. And then five came out and it wasn't Jason. And then here we have Jason resurrected and, and Jason lives. So they always kind of like say that they always uh, say like, Oh, you know, it's supposed to end the series here. This is the end. That's it. Um, but yeah, this is the first film where he gets his iconic hockey mask. Um, and the hockey mask was actually molded from the actual, I believe, Detroit Red Wings hockey mask from the 1950s. Uh, yeah, Detroit Red Wings. And the hockey mask is, you know, it's changed. It's pretty much changes in like every movie. It just, it looks different. Um, and like, even in like part seven where it's like, kind of like, uh, you know, falling apart, decaying on one, on one side of his face. But yeah, this movie, um, I just, I love the stuff with Harold in, in, in the in the store there. Like where he's like, he's drinking orange juice and donuts and he's eating all this stuff. Didn't I feed you enough for supper? You know, I'm trying to help you, but you just keep sneaking food behind my back. What am I going to do with you? And would you put that filthy thing back where it belongs? Come on. <sighs> the doctor said you need to lose weight now, didn't he? He's sitting there eating peanuts and he's just feeding his face. Oh my god, that's hilarious. So like, yeah, um, the kills were great. Um, some of the most iconic moments in the whole series. And the characters, like I said. I love the whole biker gang. You know, uh, Jason has to have people to kill. So, you know, the characters run into different characters, and so then Jason has them to, to kill in different ways. You know, a fox. You know, fox! <laughs> oh, uh, the music is great in this, but, yeah, just an all-out great slasher film uh friday the 13th part three i don't want to give you know a lot of things away uh as far as the you know i just went over the main plot points but uh yeah um definitely check out this movie if you have not seen it uh i can't imagine who hasn't uh but um yeah it's in my opinion it's the best of the 
Friday the 13th movies.